everyone. Welcome to the Expert Inside Interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by David Collins, who is in Port St. Lucie in Florida. How are you doing, David? I am fantastic, John. Thanks for having me here today. And David builds great teams, inspires and empowers people to, to exceed all expectations. He's led sales teams. He's been an individual producer. He's been at five Fortune 500 companies, smaller companies. He's turned around ailing sales teams. He's built new strategies. And today what we want to talk about is goals and visions for success. So David, let's start with goals, right? Goals uh, for success, because everybody knows you should set goals, right? But I don't think everybody knows really how to set goals and what goals really look like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know, John, it's been my experience with, with the sales teams that I've run. I've come across a really fantastic program that I use with them called the six questions. Mm -hmm. And that's very simply, where do I want to be? Where do I want to do? What do I want to see? What do I want to have? Where do I want to go? And who do I want to share it with? And those very simple questions are so powerful because then you sit and you write out your answers. And that gives you an opportunity to see what you want your life to be like. And I think, uh, and I think that's, a, that's a really important point there because I think it, it's certainly been my experience and I've probably lived my life like this on occasions in the past too, is that uh, a lot of people outsource their lives to fate, right? They just let it unfold <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and don't really, as you say, don't really have a plan, don't really understand why they're doing what they're doing, as you said, who they're doing it for, what they're mm -hmm. trying to achieve. And the clarity that comes from going through that process can be life-changing, right? Oh, absolutely. And we did that in sales meetings, actually. I would take two sales meetings a month, once a year, and that's when we would do it. So my folks had time set aside to actually do the work, answer the questions. And, you know, in between the two meetings, they would do some homework on that. But that essentially was, I find most people don't spend any time looking for their goals or trying to discover what they're going to do. Or, or as I would tell my people, Hey, what, what are you going to do with this money that we're paying you that you're earning those bonuses and commissions and such? What are you going to do with it? Well, yeah, absolutely. Because uh, you have to, I mean, to fulfill anything, you have to have a, you have to have a goal and you have to be, you have to be able to visualize it and you have to be able to head towards it. And I, and I think, yeah, that is, that is often the, uh, it's something that afflicts a lot of salespeople where they think, yeah. well, my, my quota is my goal, right? Right. That's an arbitrary number created by, your, by the company. The bigger mm -hmm. thing is, is if you have these goals, if you know what you want to do in the next one, three, five, ten years, uh, and then we talked a little, we haven't talked yet, but about the, the, the vision, the visualization, mm -hmm. a vision board, pictures of what you actually want to achieve in life and have in life then you have the representation in your office, in your workspace, in your cube, posted on your home office wall of what you're working toward. And as an effective leader, it was my role to go and say, what's that, what's that beach? What's that house? What's that car mean to you? And then three, four months later, say, hey, good job on getting that bonus. How much are you going to put toward that car? How much are you going to put toward that vacation? And then they look at you like you got three heads because you actually remembered what was important to them. And then, and that's leadership because then they're starting to go through walls and achieve unbelievable mm -hmm. numbers. And so how do you, how, so how do you convince people to do something like that? Because you know, for a lot of people would go, oh, okay, yeah, vision board, sure. It's a, uh, it's a bit cheesy, but how do you convince somebody to do it? And how do you uh, convince them or show them or demonstrate to them that it really does work, that these things work? Cause it's really all about focusing your energies, right? Right, exactly. And the way we did them again was the, the two meeting process. The first meeting is go over the questions. The homework is they come up with their answers. I asked them to share some of them because some are personal and they may not want to, and that's fine. And some are professional or just comfortable enough. Uh, but then the next phase is I go out and I get all kinds of magazines and pictures and um, images. And then we get the, all the scissors together. I got an example right here. Get all the scissors together and you come up with a big old poster board. Mm -hmm. and then you just 
hang it up. I know there's electronic versions now you can use as well as screensavers and such, but just to get them to do it as a team. And it's just a fun exercise to do in what, you know, some may say is, oh, this is going to be another boring sales meeting. It, no, it's not. We're going to take a half hour. We're going to go do this. And we're going to talk about what it is we're looking for in those yeah. pictures and why. And like you say, the important part of this is that you have something tangible to visualize mm -hmm. because let's face it, if you're in sales, you're, unless you're a rem, a rem, remarkable and you have remarkable luck, you're going to have some rough times, right? You're going to have times when things yeah. don't seem to be going. And to motivate yourself to keep going, you have to be able to hang on to some tangible things, right? And so having something like this means you can focus and go, okay, I'm not as far away as I think, or if I just redouble my efforts, or I can get through this and this will be my reward. Right. But and how many times has, has a rep who's had that dip uh, been on the other side of the desk from their boss who just says, hey, you know, you need 10 more units sold this month, or I don't know, mm -hmm. as opposed to, hey, come on, John, we're working toward this house. I know your right. goals. I know you want to take your, your wife on that vacation. That's a very different conversation than I need another 112,000 out of you in the next um, quarter. Mm -hmm. Because now it's, it's like you said, it's tangible. It's something that they want because they created what it is they want to do with their money, what they want to spend it on. And now you've got someone who says, wow, this, this leader really cares about me. He's pushing me or she's pushing me and encouraging me to think beyond the sales number on the board. Uh, and it's, it's just fantastic right. because it, it's, a little more personal it's a little more caring environment you retain your staff better and people just again put out more of the effort because they say oh, i consider and make another 15 15 minutes worth of phone calls or they say i can sit here for 15 more minutes and try to get that house it's a yeah. very different mindset very different mindset and then, and then once you've done this exercise, how do you uh, help this to become something that's sustainable, that's used on an ongoing basis, as opposed to something that's like put on the wall and then sort of forgotten about? Oh, we talk about it. Every, every quarter, we have conversations about how are you doing on your vision board goals? How are you doing on those goals? And we bring them up. Yeah. Excellent. So that, there's, there's, so that people are, are preparing and working towards it and all the time and they're remembering and uh, you know, realigning themselves on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. And especially if you're in an office environment, I know there's a lot of remote workers now, but if sure. you're in an office environment, you have that in your workspace. I have the, I had the team posted in their workspace. So if I'm walking around or some of the other reps are just drinking their coffee and want to take a five minute break, they can go up and say to somebody, Hey, what's, what's with that photo on your board? What's the, right. did you want to go to Paris? My, my parents grew up in Paris. What, you know, what do you right. want me to tell you about it? Those kinds mm -hmm. of things. And the team gels a little bit better as well. So I say, and you, and obviously you get some level of insight into the individuals, right? Because we all have different goals. We all have different things we want. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that also helps you as a leader in your uh, growth of that person in terms of helping them to stretch what areas in their work and in their life do they want to increase? Uh, is it books you can recommend that they read? Is it uh, leadership classes or a conference to send them to? Things of that nature. So you do get an insight into your people, what's important to them, and again, what they're looking to achieve. Uh, you know, what are you gonna do with your money? Mm -hmm. It's just there. So it's and then a how lot do you of fun. Yeah, and how do you help people, say, people who may be you know, different ends of the scale, maybe people who set outrageous goals for themselves or people who set goals that you know are way too within their capability? That, again, that comes down to understanding your people and getting mm -hmm. them to push beyond what they're uh, capable of, giving them a little more of a stretch and just saying to them, how about, how about, Again, for lack of a better term, how about that beach on that other continent instead of right. the one down the street for three days? Um, <laughs> but again, having those conversations on a one-on-one -on -one basis with each, with each person that you're working with really gets you to inspire and encourage them. Just like a sports coach 
He gets yeah. to motivate them and let them see that there's more in them that you see than they may see at the moment. Mm -hmm. And then how do you help people say, so you get to the end of the year and maybe, yeah. maybe I haven't achieved my goals. I haven't realized the things that I wanted to do. Maybe I'm sure. feeling a, a bit down about that, or maybe I'm not trusting the process anymore. So how do you help people when they, when they fall short? It's uh, conversations. It's look and see what did you do? What were your actions you were taking over the past few months? And what are you looking to do into the next few months to course correct? And it's like Tony Robbins gives the example of the airplane going to Honolulu. It's off course most of the time and, and re realigns as it goes. So again, mm -hmm. same thing with a person. What was happening in their life in, in work and outside of work? that held them back from achieving what they wanted to and how can you overcome that and those are just conversations and questions and it's a level of trust that your employees have with you and you with them to know that you are on their side and you're all one team working together as a leader if my people do well i do well mm -hmm. that's really how i've always approached any of my uh leadership roles in, in the sales world and then, uh, and then, how do you at the you know for those who do achieve goals and stuff? How do you celebrate success? Because let's face it, there's nothing more motivating for salespeople than to see other people succeeding because they go, "I want that." Yeah, it's share the stories. What mm -hmm. did you do? It's your time to, in a sense, not gloat, but just enjoy the spotlight. A lot of people don't want to be in the spotlight, and so it's putting them in it to say, this is a learning opportunity for everyone. What did you do that got you to where it was? Why was that important to you? And people in the, on the team and in life, they'll see more of that like, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. I know them, I have lunch with them twice a week. I know that person, they're no different than I am. I can do that too. So it's really mm -hmm. celebrate those wins because there's a lot of companies that all they talk about is shortfall. You guys aren't doing enough. You guys can do a lot better. Come on, let's work harder. As opposed to, look who, we just got a $100,000 contract Friday. Congratulations to Brian. And then things of that nature. Just really letting people know that there's good things going on in the world. And it's not just about let's make our weekly number, make our monthly or quarterly number. And then re obviously reinforcing the good habits that maybe led to that person landing that deal. So then everybody else goes, okay, well, if I follow the process, then I, I may have that kind of fortune myself. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, and I always encourage my reps sit next to each other when you're doing calls, you know, pair up. If you're doing, if we're doing a telemarketing blitz or a outside sales, although in the past we did a lot of door to door, uh, mm -hmm. go together, hear what the other person's saying. What are they what are they doing? How do they approach someone either on the phone or in person and take turns? So there's a little bit of pressure off of you and uh, you can then assist each other, especially if you're out in meetings together. It's, it's fantastic. So you're not always uh, on the, not the seat of your pants, but you're following your sales process much better. And you have a moment to regroup and rethink while your partner is asking a question of the client. And then would you encourage people when they set goals to set, you know, short, medium and long term goals? Because maybe like getting that big house is a longer term goal, but maybe there's something else and in, in interim one and a shorter term one so that everything isn't so far removed. Oh, absolutely. And it's and it's the easy numbers that I've used in the past were, were one year goals, three year goals, five year goals, and then the big 10 year goals. And really mm -hmm. the ones and the threes get you on your way to the bigger goals. And again, your goals can change over time. You may realize you hate skiing and you don't ever want to ski yep. in your life, but you went. And then it's not, I don't want to buy a ski lodge anymore. Uh, but it's those areas where you are working on some shorter term goals. Hey, I can run three miles without stopping or do 10 pull-ups. Mm -hmm. Those are shorter term goals than I want to win a fitness competition. Right. You have to build those steps on the way. It's a, stair it's a staircase to success. You're taking one step at a time, one day at a time, and one activity at a time. Okay. All right. Well, listen, David, this has been great. And I think uh, people hopefully took away something from this. I get your vision boards out, get your set your goals, uh, make sure they're in front of you every day. Make sure you're reminding yourself what you're actually, why you're doing what you're doing. 
uh, and especially those times when the going gets tough, uh, it's always good to remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. So before we go, David, if you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more. Uh, the easiest way is to find me is on Instagram, at uh, Dave Collins Life. My number is 303-883-7801 or thesalescoach at gmail.com. Fantastic. Well, listen, David, this has been a pleasure talking with you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.